Good morning, students. We are here to uh, discuss another topic, another lecture. Um, in this video and in the next video, I will explain uh, uh, McTaggart's The Unreality of Time. So these are the lectures for the 27th and the 29th of April. The, um, the topic is too long, so I decided, as usual, to uh, break it down into uh, part one and part two. I will uh, post the videos in the uh, on Blackboard. You uh, I want to remind you that you uh, I assigned uh, uh, the paper, the unreality of time, that you uh, you may find you may download from uh, my website, and also uh, you will you will find uh, the um, PowerPoint presentation that I'm about to show you on my website just by clicking on the uh, uh, on the uh, hyperlink uh, there uh, you're looking at my syllabus uh, or just by going directly to my website so let's start talking about uh, time in general um, this uh, this by the way I chose uh, to talk about McTaggart's time because it, it makes it a, a great companion to uh, to the previous lecture if you recall the lecture on the uh, Kalam cosmological argument where if you recall the uh, the notion of time was very important in that argument because as I said that they uh, the the um, uh, those who criticize the Kalam argument argue that time doesn't exist and so uh, I guess McTaggart McTaggart's argument, if successful, will uh, be able to uh, uh, to, uh, to criticize, to attack the Kalam. Uh, as a matter of fact, William Lane Craig engaged with the, uh, the problem of time. I think he, he wrote an, an entire monograph, a book, um, defending the reality of time. And so he discusses also uh, the argument uh, from McTaggart. Uh, it's a it's a I don't know if it's easy or complicated. It's a, it's a, it's easy as an argument, um, but sometimes I think, at least for me, sometimes things that are so easy sometimes are are, are tricky. Um, but anyway, I, I, I'm going to try to make it as clear as possible and reconstruct McTaggart's argument. Now, let me say something before I uh, move. Um, we uh, I expose the um, I uh, I explain the argument. Uh, let me talk about time in general and and space. We um, time and space are we, we know from uh, from modern science are one thing. It's a time space continuum. Um, but they are two. Uh, they are different. They have different characteristics. For example, space is three-dimensional, and it is what what is known as isotropic. Isotropic means that th there is no direction, there is no sense in space. There is no left, right, up, or down, uh, and it's continuous. Whereas time is one-dimensional, as far as we know, there there are no dimensions of time. There is one dimension. It's linear. It starts and and it continues on in a in a sort of line in a linear way, and so it is known as n isotropic. So n isotropic means there is a, a privileged direction. So what exactly is time? It's hard to say. Um, because for one thing, time we cannot see it. I mean, space is uh, also, um, but I mean, you, you, we can see space. We can at least uh, understand space. Um, but but time is totally invisible. We uh, we don't really uh, experience it that way. Um, and um, if we ask, what exactly is that passes? If we say time is we experience time, the, the passing of time. But what exactly is that passes? Uh, is it a property? Uh, what is that? 
it is a property that changes, for example. But what changes? Uh, what exactly is that changes? Um, we certainly change. We can see physical change. But time, in what sense does time change? Um, so uh, another question is about time is whether we are moving or it is time that is moving. Uh, are we moving to into the future or uh, the future is coming closer, closer and closer to uh, the present? Uh, These are all puzzling questions about time. Uh, in, in fact, if you think about it, if the past doesn't exist, I mean, in a sense, I mean, in the sense that obviously you remember that that about yesterday, that's the past, but but the past is not present; it's no longer present. In fact, when I started this lecture, this PowerPoint presentation, a couple of minutes ago. Um, that time is no longer here. It's gone. It doesn't exist anymore. It no longer exists. Then what exists? The future doesn't exist, certainly. The future has not happened yet. <clears throat> so it seems that it's, it's the, uh, the only thing that exists is the present. But where is the present? You see, if I, if I do, that's past. That's already gone. So how long is the present? Is the present one second? Well, no, because second can be divided. And so uh, um, you need a fraction of a second. But I don't care how small the fraction of a second would be. You can still divide a fraction. So it seems that the present, it's something that cannot be divided. But anything that exists, anything that has a measure, anything that has a... <clears throat> Uh, an interval can be divided. So it might seem that that time, if the present exists and the present is not something that can be divided, it seems that even the present is something that doesn't really exist. I don't know. But um, there are different uh, theories of time. One known as presentism, and the other one eternalism. Um, <clears throat> so there are those who argue that temporal passage of time is real. Okay, uh, we we will learn this later that, that this is known as the A theory of time. The A theory of time. So. Uh, um, some people argue that time is real. Time is an objective feature of the world, just like there's hardness, wetness, uh, many other features, many other properties. There is this, there's time, and time is a feature of reality. So time is independent of the uh, perspective of conscious beings. So if there are no human beings, time will still exist. This is uh, what they know, what they call a dynamic view of time. And um, and furthermore, some someone, some some people argue that th 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 there is a there is a property, uh, presentness. That's what makes the present time exist. And this presentness, um, this thing that I tried to describe earlier, is the thing that moves along the timeline and that's why we experience time but the only thing that exists in time is presentness so future and past they're really not here um, so uh, from uh, presentism we go to uh, eternalism eternalism is really uh, uh, what they what they known actually a better name is the block view of time eternalism. Uh, the block view of time makes more sense. Uh, it's easier to, uh, it explains better. Um, on this view, 
every uh, single moment of time is equal and is equally real, as real as any other moment. So the past is as real as the present and as real as the future. So for example, right now, relative to uh, when I started this presentation, right now that I'm speaking right now to you, this is the future, okay? And you can, uh, you can uh, uh, actually do it with a video. You can uh, rewind the video and, uh, and think about what my words right now and say, oh, those words are in the future. And in fact, if you uh, fast forward, that's what I am. That's the future, okay? So, uh, so to explain the block view of time, uh, many people argue that, that the, the way that we understand time and reality is by, it's like a video, okay? A video that has already happened, for example. Like this video that I'm recording now, I'm recording it right now, uh, so I'm creating it in time. But for you, from your point of view, you're watching the video and you can skip. If you're, for example, I'm boring, you can skip ahead. Don't do that because uh, <laughs> it's important. You have to hear the lecture. But you can uh, skip the video and go into the future. Now, if you ask from the point of view uh, of the video, recorded video, if you ask uh, which point in the video is the real uh, time, well, from the point of view of the video, anywhere you put your cursor, any, uh, any uh, time you choose in the video is equally real. So if you, uh, if you fast forward to uh, three minutes or uh, 20 minutes, they, uh, those two positions in time are equally real. That's the block view of time. Um, it's a, it's a very strange view, but it, it explains, um, it explains a lot about time. Why, why we, we have, we talk about a future and a past when in reality they don't exist. Well, the block view of time or eternalism says, no, they do exist because they're, they're on, on the same timeline. Now, the reason, if you ask, if, they are, if the past and the future are equally existent as the present time, how come I don't experience them? I mean, I have experienced the past, but it's gone. I don't experience it anymore. The only thing that I have is this present time. And in fact, as I said, present it, it, it is very um, quick. It runs away from you. It doesn't stay put. You can't really hold it down because it is just, uh, it's not even a fraction of a second. It's something that so short that can, it's not even a measure that can be divided. And so uh, the future, future obviously doesn't exist yet. So how can you say the block view? How can you say that? present, past, and future are equally real. Well, we experience that because we are finite beings. We are in time ourselves, the theory would, would say. And we have to experience time. So uh, we experience the present. But, but remember that time is, is, the, uh, is, is there. Okay? It's part of the block of reality. So uh, now we are here in reality in the present, so obviously we can't ex experience the other block. The other block is gone from our perspective, but it's still there because it's part of reality, and reality is a whole. We don't have access to other parts of the block, so to speak, but potentially it would be possible. So I guess the block view would allow uh, time travel if it were possible to... Uh, to build a, a time machine, I guess a, a block uh, theorist would say, yes, you could go back in the past because it's just part of reality. Okay, so it, it is still there. 
just as much as present time is still here. So uh, for presentism, just to illustrate what I mean, presentism, the past and the future are not real. That's presentism. It says only this tiny uh, instant, but why do I say instant? It's, it's even shorter than instant. instant. It's something that can't be divided because an instant is very short, but it can't be divided. It's something just that uh, you can't describe how small it is. It's always present. Past and future don't exist. The block theory, on the other hand, says that all times in the universe exist together because they, they, they exist simultaneously. Not for us, from our point of view, because we are finite beings and we have to experience the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the part of the block that we occupy at any time. But, but those are the times, the past and the future, they are present. They are there. It's very bizarre, I know. For example, e uh, eternalism uh, was advocated by, by the, uh, uh, the ancient Greek philosopher uh, Parmenides, who uh, said change is an illusion. Um, actually, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure exactly if he would endorse the block theory of time. What I know is that Parmenides uh, theorized that the reality is one, is one thing. I guess that's as, as close enough as possible to a block theory of time. And according to Parmenides, nothing really changes. All change is just an illusion, illusion uh, generated by, by, our, uh, um, by the fact that we are finite beings and we experience uh, life as uh, finite beings. Um, on the other hand, Heraclitus, another uh, ancient Greek philosopher, disputed this idea of, pres of the block, as I said, that everything is one. Um, and uh, everything, so as I said, for Parmenides, reality is a frozen block. Okay, is one thing. There's no, uh, um, and by the way, there, 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 there aren't any uh, uh, separate entities. It's just one thing. And uh, the separateness of entities is just an illusion again. But for, uh, for Heraclitus, time, it, it, um, so the world, the reality is uh, uh, constantly flowing. Nothing stays the same. So he gives us this idea of presentism, that everything flows. Uh, if you remember a famous quote for, uh, from, uh, from Heraclitus, I'm sure you heard this, and if you haven't, you might hear from the first time. Heraclitus famously said, you cannot step into uh, the same river twice. Why is that? Because when you, once you, uh, you set your foot into the river, well, the, the water, that water, the same water that you, uh, you touched when the first time you, uh, you, you set foot into the river is gone. So it's not the same river. And in fact, the, even the, uh, everything about the river is different. The banks of the river are different. Now, naturally, you say, well, I see that the, the, uh, the river is the same. Well, from your point of view, it's the same. But uh, if you were to uh, look at a microscopical, um, microscopic level, everything changes. You have changed, for example, since you, uh, you started watching this presentation. Very uh, tiny changes, but you have changed. And so, uh, according to Heraclitus, everything constantly changes. There's nothing that stays the same. Well, I guess the only thing that stays the same is the fact that everything changes. So, the block might sound uh, absurd, uh, but not more than, than the fact that um, our up is someone else's down and that the Earth is traveling at several miles per second. Uh, so it's, if the block view is true, our choices are, are embedded 
uh, within uh, the fabric of space and time. Our choices are already played out, so to speak, because it's all a block of reality. Past, present, and future events are, already exist. Okay, so now let's come to uh, McTaggart's proof of the unreality of time. Now, first of all, some biographical information. John Mc, uh, so his his uh, in, uh, full name was John McTaggart Ellis McTaggart. Quite uh, a bizarre name, wasn't it? Uh, he was born in 1866, and he was famous uh, for uh, writing. Uh, the book, The Nature of Existence. This was published in, uh, in 1921. Now, his life was, uh, was very uh, normal. He was a, uh, a Cambridge University professor. Uh, they, they say that they tell stories about McTaggart going around Cambridge on a tricycle and, and to say hello to, uh, to cats. Um, he became famous for uh, this argument. This argument that, by the way, I, I want to mention, um, the argument that is nowadays, I have to say, that most philosophers, most scientists, uh, deny, do not accept. They, uh, they claim to uh, have refuted this argument. Uh, I don't know. My personal opinion is really irrelevant at this point because we're here to, uh, to learn about the argument. So let's look at the argument. So in, in the, his famous argument here is that, and I quote, I believe that nothing that exists can be temporal and therefore time is unreal. Time does not exist. Now, this, this would be, uh, if you remember our discussions in the previous lecture on the Kalam cosmological argument, this would help the, uh, the atheist argue against the Kalam by saying that, that the, uh, the second premise, if you remember the Kalam, said that the universe began to exist. Um, uh, this argument, McTaggart's argument, I guess, would work in that direction to... Uh, to show that uh, time doesn't exist, so if there is no time, there's no beginning of the universe, and that's what many uh, uh, many modern uh, cosmologists are trying to prove. That time, uh, I mean, that that's one solution. That time doesn't exist. At least uh, Roger Penrose uh, is also arguing uh, something like this: that time. Um, Time disappears as we move farther back, closer and closer to um, to the um, the beginning, uh, the, the the Big Bang, the singularity. But that's uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, let's talk about McTaggart now. So uh, time is unreal. Why does McTaggart think that time is unreal? Okay, so let me reconstruct the argument and. Uh, in order to understand McTaggart's argument, we have to master, we have to understand clearly, not just, uh, oh, okay, I get it, more or less. No, I want you to understand this very, very clearly. Uh, what I want you to understand very clearly is the, uh, the distinction between uh, A and B series of time. Now, uh, quoting uh, McTaggart, argument. Positions in time, as time appears to us prima facie, don't get scared of the uh, spooky terminology. Prima facie means uh, what, we, uh, what seems to be more plausible okay, when we see it, when we think about it. So positions in time, as time appears to us uh, plausibly, the, the, the way we, we think time works, are distinguished in two ways. 
each position is earlier than sun. Okay, so uh, so you have, for example, right now um, that I'm talking about this, this position in time is earlier than what I'm saying now. Okay, when I started explaining this was a couple of seconds ago, and that was earlier than right now. And right now, of course, the right now, a few seconds ago, when I said right now, is earlier than right now. Okay? So uh, there is this, this kind of feature of time, that there are positions in time, and we can uh, describe them by saying that what McTaggart's use is the... Uh, the term A, A series of time. Uh, we can describe it by saying that these there are positions in time, events in time, they are earlier than some, and also later than some. Okay. Um, so uh, from the point of view uh, of when I started this lecture, right now this position in time is later than that okay that's that's easy nothing complicated here um, and the second feature is that each position in time is either past present or f future okay so now the distinction of the former class are permanent in the sense that if an event is earlier than another event this is very obvious so don't get confused if this event is later than this event and this event is earlier than this event this is not going to change I don't care how much money you give me this will never change it's fixed it's just fixed it doesn't change. It's permanent. On the other hand, on the other hand, the B series, the B series of thought, uh, of time, the B theory of time, says that um, positions in time can change. What do I mean by can change? As I illustrated before. Okay. Listen to this. Hey. Now you see, when I said hey a few seconds ago, it used to be present. Um, now, from our point of view now, it is a past event. Okay? And um, from the point of view of when I started this lecture, my saying, hey, was future, a future event. So the, the event started in the future. It moved down into the present. And then it went into the past. Okay? So uh, there are these two features in uh, with uh, uh, regarding time one is positions are fixed because something is earlier than something else or later than something else or a any position in time this discussion this video when I said hey anything any uh, anything in time uh, the discovery of America um, the Civil War, anything, um, the, 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 land, the landing on the moon. The landing on the moon was, okay, let's not talk about the landing on the moon because some people believe that never happened. But let's talk about the Civil War, okay? The Civil War at one point was, was in the future. No, no one knew that was going to happen. And then it, 
it, and then it became present because people were fighting it. And then at one point, it became past. From our point of view, it's, it's in the past. So uh, as you can see, events move in time. But their relationship, so for example, the 9-11 and the Civil War, uh, they have a relationship that is fixed. You can't move them. You can't switch them. 9-11 is later than Civil War. And it will always be the same. And I don't care how much money you give me, I, I'm not going to be able to change it. Okay? All right. So, now, McTaggart says that these two classes exist in time. Okay? Once again, the first class of properties is the B-series properties. Uh, this is earlier than, later than. This is permanent. Okay? The second class is the A-series. This is past, present, future, as I just explained. Okay. So, A-series and B-series. I didn't say Siri. I said Sirius. That's my phone. Oh, no. Silence. So, A-series are temporal again. Okay. Uh, the A properties are temporal properties. They are not permanent. They change. B series. Um, temporal properties, they are permanent. A, they change. Okay. I found this on the web for temporal properties temperament. All right. So, uh, A, they move. B, they're, they're fixed. I hope you understand this distinction. Okay, When you think about time, these are the two characteristics of time. That one event moves from past, present, and future. I mean, it goes from future to, pa to present to past. And, uh, and another, prop another uh, relationship is that between events uh, that earlier or later than our relationships that never change, they're fixed. Okay. Why are we, you repeating this over and over, Professor? Because this is very crucial to the argument. If you don't get this, in fact, let me test your knowledge now. I'll give you a few seconds to answer. If I tell you that McTaggart lived before you were born, um, what is this? Is this an A property or a B property? Does he have an A or a B property? So, in other words, something that moves or it's something permanent. McTaggart lived before you were born. Now, the answer is B series, B property. Why? Because it will never change. McTaggart lived before you were born, so uh, his life is earlier than yours, and it will always be the same. Uh, it is going to be the same in the future. In a million years, it will always be true that his life was before your life. And in fact, in a way, even if you want to look at it from, uh, from the past, before McTaggart was born, still, even uh, from that point of view, that relationship is fixed. It, it will never change because his life came first. Okay. So, the Bush administration is in the past relative to uh, now, to ourselves. I hope you answered uh, A, A series. Why? Because at one point it, it was, it used to be in the future. Now it's in the past. Okay? But before that happened, was in the future, then it became present, 
and then it vanished, vanished in the past. What about this? The best day for me are still to come. Meaning, there are still a lot of good days to come for me in the future. Well, I hope you, uh, you answered uh, A series because the be <laughs> again with this because the best days are now in the future. They will one day they will become present and then past. All right. By by the way, if I did it too fast, you can uh, pause the video and answer the question and then see the uh, the answer. All right, the next one. The Obama administration is in the past relative to uh, 2019. You can pause the video. The correct answer is B. B because it would always be relative, um, always be past relative to uh, 2019. Okay? What about the earthquake is happening now? We're shaking now. A or B? Well, I hope you said A because relative to yesterday, the earthquake was in the future. It is happening now. But now, the event of the earthquake, is it has moved in time. It was future. Right now, it's present. It's happening now. And tomorrow is going to be past. Okay, so if you have mastered this distinction, if you haven't, just go back, rewind the video, watch it again, read uh, McTaggart, McTaggart's paper. He explains it there. But it's, I think, it's pretty simple. I mean, if you, are, if you are at this point, you are a college student or a grad student. And you uh, you study in a university. I'm pretty sure you uh, you're smart enough to understand this distinction. It's not very complicated. So there is a genuine genuine distinction. There is a real distinction between uh, these two classes of properties. Okay. Um, because we think that some objects, some events uh, happen in time. Okay. So using the, this distinction between A and B uh, series of time, McTaggart mounts an argument against uh, um, the uh, reality of time, an argument that is supposed to prove that time does not exist. That's, as you can see, the conclusion, it's time, nothing exists in time, okay? And so time is not real. But on the basis of what? Well, on the basis of two premises. That it is impossible for, uh, for uh, two events to have all the properties of time. Namely, past, present, and future. Okay? Remember what I said before, that the Civil War, for example at one point was in the future, but then became present, and then now it's past. Um, but according to uh, McTaggart, this is, uh, this is wrong because, I mean, it's false, because nothing, no event can have all these three properties at the same time, past, present, and future. How can you say that the Civil War is past, present, and future? And you might say to me, but I don't. I only say that it is past. Yes, but from your point of view, from our point of view, it's past. But from the point of view of, say, uh, the, uh, the 1600s, okay, the Civil War was future. And from the point of view of the people who fought in the Civil War, it was present. So what what gives you the right to say that your point of view in time is the one that we should prefer? 
Why is it your point of view of right now is the correct one? Why can't we say that civil war is future? Now, naturally, it's, it's past relative to us, but it doesn't mean that because it's relative to us, it is an event that happened in the past period. It is an event that happened in the past relative to us, relative to me. But who am I? Okay, you don't understand this. Fine. Let me give you an illustration of why um, it seems to me that this premise is true. Let's for a moment think about the, uh, the nature of motion. Right now, I'm here in front of you, frozen, in front of my computer, recording this video, but I'm not moving, as you can see. But what if I told you that I am moving? Because Earth is spinning on its axis. So technically, we are moving. I am moving. You are too. So uh, now, relative to uh, Earth, I am moving. Relative to uh, my living room, we're not moving. I'm not moving. Similarly, if you are on the bus, and uh, you're reading your paper on the bus. I look at you from a park bench. I see the bus moving. And, uh, and, I, and I see you, you moving along with the bus. So from my perspective, from my point of reference, you are moving. But from your point of reference, you're not really moving because you're sitting there. You're not going anywhere. So relative to the bus, you're moving course, a relative to uh, your seat, relative to yourself, you're not moving. And um, now, one more example. Suppose that instead of a bench, I take uh, a motorcycle, and your bus, you're on a bus traveling at 50 miles per hour, and I'm traveling at 20 miles per hour. Now, relative to me on, the, on a bike, on, on a motorcycle, uh, you are moving, but you're moving at 30 miles per hour, right? Bus is moving 50. I'm moving at 20. So relative to me, your speed is 30. But relative to, uh, to a person observing this on a street, on a road, um, I am moving 20 miles per hour, and you're moving 50 miles per hour on a bus. Now... Who's right? Who's correct? If you answered no one is correct because it's relative. If I ask you, but so which is, what is your speed exactly? That's the wrong question. You have to ask me, uh, what is my speed in reference to what? According to whom? And so uh, it is relative. So. Uh, so you, you see now, going back to, uh, to the first premise of this, this argument, um, nothing can have past, present, and future. Okay? But it seems that every event has all these properties, past, present, and future, because they're past, present, and future. Now, the second premise says, if nothing really has any a serious property, because to have these properties, you have to be past, present, and future. But nothing is past, present, and future at the same time. Then nothing exists in time. Now, I know what you're thinking, I think. So let's turn uh, first to, uh, to premise one. Because that's, that's the, uh, the point in contention. And I want to read a quote. McTaggart says, McTaggart knows what you're thinking. McTaggart knows your problem with accepting premise number one. So he says, past, present, and future are incompatible determinations. We, we, as I explained that, nothing can be past, present, and future. 
Every event must be one or the other, but no event can be more than one. So if I say that any event in the past is past, that implies that it is neither present nor future. You see? And this exclusiveness is essential to change and therefore to time. For the only change we can get is from future to present to past. That's obvious. So the characteristics, therefore, are incompatible. But every event has them all. So if M is past, it has been present and future. It is, so if it is future, it will be present and past. If it is present, it has been future and will be present. Thus, all the three characteristics belong to each event. How is this consistent with their being incompatible? See, it, it's, just, uh, it's just impossible. You uh, either have one or the other, but you can't have all of these properties. But once again, you say, but no, but look, it's only one property at the time. But that's not true because every event has all the properties. So the idea is, again, is this. If any event has one of these properties, then it has them all. But it is impossible. So you, uh, the only conclusion is that time doesn't exist because these things are not in time. Um, now, is the premise true? Obviously, McTaggart is aware of a difficulty. Okay, um, and the uh, the typical objection is to say, "Look, uh, again, I'm not convinced by this because." Every event has all the, uh, the properties, past, present, and future, but only at one time or another. So uh, um, it is impossible that they, that, that they have all the properties, past, present, and future, at the same time. And it's not at, at the same time. Um, we can't just talk simply about and events having these properties, past, present, and future. So um, the objection goes, we have to talk about an event um, that has a proper, one of these three properties at a certain time. And, and if you talk about it this way, then there's no contradiction. It's, it's, it's very consistent to say, the Civil War was in the past, okay? Um, and it was in the past, but wait a minute now. Hold on a second. Let me think. The Civil War, so what are you saying essentially? Are you saying, the subjection is saying that the Civil War was in the past, so it had, it has the property of past at a certain time. Doesn't this mean that you the, the objection is saying that the Civil War was has the property of past or pastness in the past? Or in other words, it is past in the past. That's that's essentially what, what this means, right? So let's call this the obvious objection. But Meg Taggart, let me tell you, it is very clever. Okay. Uh, he uh, he he demonstrates that, that this this objection really fails, and if you use this objection, you misunderstand the argument. Because ask yourself, what does it mean? As I said, that an event um, has one one of the properties. At a certain time, for example, it is past. It has the uh, property of pastness, presentness, or futureness at a certain time. Well, the problem is 
McTaggart says, that's that's false because no event in in the, in the history of the world has the properties of being um, only present, only past, or or only future. Uh, it always every event. Well, I'm not talking about the first event in time, of course, or the last, if it's possible that it is last. But any event in time uh, will be past, is present, and it was future. Okay? It was future. So, instead of... So, the objection, essentially, that events in time have a property, only one property, and at a specific time, basically says that instead of uh, the... Uh, the property of past, present, and future. Now, by saying that, by objecting, you're saying that we have to conceive events in time um, in the way that you can see, you, you see here, down here, at the bottom, this chart. Okay? So we should really talk about um, a, uh, a second level of A properties. In other words, an event uh, was past, is present, will be past. Okay? Or it was past, it is present, and it will be present. Okay? So it was past, it is past, it will be present. You have to separate the things, the properties. It was present, it is present, it will be present. It was future, it is future, it will be future. Um, I hope you, uh, you understand the point. So let me, once again, go back to the point. When I say to you, any event in history, like the Civil War, has three properties, past, present, and future, and you say, no, that's impossible because... It's either one or the other. And McTaggart says, exactly. But because it has all three, then nothing is, happens in time. And time is not real. When you say, no, 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 wait a minute, McTaggart. You know, that's, that's not the way to look at it. The point is this, that every event is not just past, present, and future at the same time. Every, any event, like the Civil War, the Civil War was past, is past and will be past, okay? But you have to want, so it was past, it was present, and it was future, okay? So it is past, it is present, and it is future. It will be past, it will be present, it will be future. But you see that, that by doing this, you don't really uh, um, clear out, do away with the, uh, the, uh, uh, the inconsistency because if you say this essentially you're saying that an event is past in the past past in the present past in the future present in the past present in the present present in the future and future in the past future in the present future in the future that's, a, that's essentially the, uh, the objection. Uh, however, this is a problem. Now, take one example. Um, we said that an event, a civil war, was past in the past, present in the, in the past, and future in the past. Okay? Um, so, uh, for example, 10 years ago, from the point of view of 10 years ago, which is the past for us, the, uh, the Civil War was past. Um, now, from our point of view, when the Civil War happened, that was, the, it is the past, but at that moment, 
The Civil War was present, so it was present in the past. Um, now, if you go before, the, say, the 1600s, from the point of view of the 1600s, the Civil War was future in the past, but the past from our point of view and from, from uh, the point of view of the Civil War, okay? But once again, do you see that what's happening here? That from, uh, from the first uh, uh, series of, of properties from past, present, and future, now we are, in order to fix the problem, to avoid the problem, uh, the paradox, we have to uh, come up with a second level of properties. We have to say events are not just past, present, and future, but they are past in the past, present in the past, and future in the past. But you see what, what's happening here? We, uh, we are fixing the first problem, but we're generating another problem. And the problem is that how is it possible that an event can be past in the past, present in the past, future in the past? Now, the only reply is the following. Look, uh, this is frustrating. You don't understand what I mean. It is simply not true that every event, like the Civil War, has all these properties, past in the past, past in the present, past in the future, and so on. Okay? The, the Civil War has all these properties at some time. So at some time, it has one property, at some time it has another property, and sometimes it has another, a different property, the third property. So while it is true that an event is present in the present, was future in the present, and will be past in the present, no event has each of these properties and all of these properties at the same time. That's what I mean. But once again, if this fixes the second problem, it generates a third problem. Let me illustrate how. Because by saying this, you, uh, um, you invoke a third level of properties. So now you're saying, with this third objection, you're saying an event like the Civil War was past in the past in the present, present in the past in the present, and future in the past in the present. And once again, now you, uh, you have an event like the Civil War that has, still has these third level properties. We can go, we can, we can do this all day, by the way. You can, you can have um, past in the past in the past in the present and so on. Um, but, but you get what this is going. This idea will be that, um, that an event has an infinite amount of property, properties. So th this, this argument, this level, different levels of properties will only lead you to, uh, to an infinite regress. And we talked about the infinite regress and we said that it's not, it's not possible to have an infinite regress. And so um, that's, that's the problem. So we can't, we cannot just talk about uh, events having a serious properties of past, present, and future. This is what the objection says, but rather an event is present or was future and so on. But this does not avoid the first. So you have to invoke a second level. And uh, in order to justify the second level, you have to justify it with a third level and so on to infinity. And since an infinite number of series is not possible, then we, uh, we all go back to, uh, to the same problem. The, the problem that every event has three properties or, uh, 
depending on the level, of course. Uh, but there are always three. So a level, level one, level, second level, third level, and so on. And so no objection can remove the, uh, the contradiction. The contradiction remains, you understand? Now, if, if this was not abundantly clear to you, uh, rewind the video, think about it, read the paper. But, but that's, I, I think that, that you, you, we can't easily dispute the fact that every event, uh, whether it's a civil war or the 9-11, uh, it has three properties, past, present, and future. You can't say, you, can, you cannot isolate, isolate it and say, no, 9-11, uh, it, it has the property of past in the past. That doesn't remove the, uh, the problem because you're saying that it is past in the past. And, uh, but, it, but it also, you can't deny that it is um, past in the future. Okay? So it has all the three properties. Any way you slice it, you just can't not isolate it. If you uh, uh, invoke a um, uh, the first level, it has three properties, past, present, and future. If you invoke a second level, it still has three properties, past in the past, past in the present, past in the future, and so on, the third level, and, 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 and so forth. So every event... Now, again, the idea is the following, I think, to understand it. You can't really isolate uh, the properties because in order to isolate the properties, you would have to say that any point of view, any point of reference is the correct point of reference, but you are, you are not entitled to that because your point of reference is just as good as the point of reference of any, anyone who lived in the past. Anyone who said, from my point of reference, the Civil War is in the future. Or uh, from the point of view of the, uh, the soldiers in the, in the Civil War who said, the Civil War is now. So what makes your view, your point of reference, more correct than another point of reference? You see, you, you can't do that. And so, uh, so that's why every event has three properties, because it's past, present, and future at the same time. Okay. Um, no, no, no. Okay, so some people say, no, 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 look, when I said that events don't simply have a series properties, but they have them at some time, I did not mean replace past, present, and future with past in the past, past in the present, past in the future, or past in the past in the present and past in the past and so on. I didn't mean that. So what do you mean? Well, let me let me do something here. Let me end uh, part one of this lecture right here, and um, and I'm going to be back with part two very soon.